received countless Emmys, Grammys, and Peabody's. He has ran two presidential campaigns, published several books, made the Maxim Hot 100, roasted President Bush to his face, has a treadmill named after him on the International Space Station, and coined the 2005 Word of the Year. This Tuesday, Stephen Colbert takes over The Late Show on CBS, another in a long list of achievements spanning his comedic career. Today, I want to take a look at Colbert's career over the past several decades and analyze how he revolutionized political satire. Stephen Colbert was born on May 13, 1964 in Washington, D.C. It's fitting he was born in the city he would make a living off tearing to shreds. He and his ten siblings grew up in South Carolina. At the age of ten, Colbert lost his father and two of his brothers in a plane crash, after which he withdrew from the world for some time, turning to science fiction and fantasy novels for entertainment. After spending two years at Hampton Sydney College, Colbert transferred to Northwestern University, joined the theater program, and changed the pronunciation of his last name. From Colbert to Colbert. Initially focused on dramatic acting, Colbert became interested in improvisational comedy while studying with actor Del Close in the mid-80s and joined the Chicago-based improv group Improv Olympia. After graduating from Northwestern and in need of a job, Colbert started selling souvenirs for the Second City Improv Theater. After discovering the perks of working for the Second City included free improv classes, Colbert enrolled with the program and was soon hired to their traveling program as an understudy for Steve Carell. While part of the Second City, Colbert formed a comedic team with Amy Sedaris and Paul Dinello, and in the mid-1990s, the three of them relocated to New York and created the sketch comedy program Exit 57 for Comedy Central. Harrod. <laughs> the salmon. I'm sorry, Harrod. We're just not used to this kind of salmon trouble. The show aired for two short seasons between 1995 and 1996 before being canceled. Colbert spent the next several years bouncing around various shows, starting with The Dana Carvey Show, where Colbert and Steve Carell were featured in the animated short series The Ambiguously Gay Duo. The Ambiguously Gay Duo, The Ambiguously Gay Duo, They are taking on evil, come what may, They are fighting all crimes to save the day, They are extremely close in an ambiguous way, They are ambiguously gay. After the Dana Carvey show ended, the ambiguously gay duo joined Saturday Night Live. In 1997, Colbert joined the cast of a very young late night show called The Daily Show with Craig Kilborn. Colbert remained with the program in 1999 when Kilborn was replaced by Jon Stewart. Apparently, the show became a big success after. At the same time, Colbert was developing a new sitcom with Sedaris and Danello for Comedy Central. Strangers with Candy, a parody of after-school specials, featured Sedaris as a 46-year-old runaway returning to high school where Colbert was a history teacher. As I rose above the noise and confusion Just to get a glimpse behind this illusion I was... All right, everybody, on you go! On the career wagon, let's move it! Strangers with Candy aired 30 episodes on Comedy Central between April of 1999 and October of 2000. The series would later be revived as a movie in 2005. In the early 2000s, when The Daily Show became increasingly political, Colbert stood out among the other correspondents as Stewart's sidekick. Colbert developed a character for the show, an idiot who thinks he knows what he's talking about but is often far off the mark. This character would become Colbert's trademark act over the next decade and a half. One of Colbert's recurring comedy bits once again paired him with Steve Carell, called Even Steven. You just made me vomit in my own mouth. What's the weather like up your own ass? Starting in 2001, Colbert voiced insane lawyer Phil Ken Seven in Adult Swim's Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law. Baruch Atah Hashem, hello Kainu Melech HaOlam. Back on The Daily Show, Colbert served as the show's emergency host, filling in when Stewart was needed elsewhere. He was featured in many of The Daily Show's political segments, including being sent to both the Democratic and Republican national conventions across 2000 and 2004, and joining Stewart for live election night coverage in 2004. Colbert's rise to hosting his own program began in 2003 when The Daily Show aired an entirely fake commercial for a spinoff program called The Colbert Report. Tune in to The Colbert Report. It's French, bitch. Join Stephen Colbert for a lively half hour as he delves right past the issues of the day and straight into what he thinks. And as always, I'll give my guests the last word. Condoleezza Rice, you have the last word. 
Thank you very much. Good You're to be with you. You're a moron. The promo was completely fake. Just a funny segment for The Daily Show, but it created a concept that two years later would become a reality when Comedy Central wanted to expand The Daily Show brand. The show, envisioned as a parody of pundit-style political shows, was given an eight-week tryout period by Comedy Central, with the first episode airing on October 17, 2005. After just two weeks of airing, retaining a healthy 86% of The Daily Show's audience, the Colbert Report was picked up for a full year. The word truthiness, which Colbert coined in his first episode, was chosen as the American Dialect Society's 2005 Word of the Year. About half a year after a show started, Colbert made national headlines when hosting the White House Correspondents Association dinner in April of 2006. By the way, before I, I get started, if anybody needs anything else at their tables, just speak slowly and clearly into your table numbers. Someone from the NSA will be right over with a cocktail. <laughs> In front of the nation's top politicians and media members, Colbert spent 20 minutes in his television character blasting the Bush administration in front of a national audience. The set did not go over well within the room, with several members of Bush's team leaving during the performance and the media reaction afterwards was mixed. I believe the government that governs best is the government that governs least, and by these standards we have set up a fabulous government in Iraq. In the following days, however, video of Colbert's speech spread like wildfire on the internet, at the time becoming one of the most viewed videos on YouTube, which was still in its infancy. Audio of Colbert's act was made available for purchase on iTunes as the same day of new albums from Pearl Jam and Red Hot Chili Pepper, and Colbert outsold both bands. On October 7th, 2007, Colbert released his book, I Am America and So Can You, which was based around his television persona. On October 16th, after weeks of dropping hints, Colbert announced his candidacy for President of the United States, planning on running in the Democratic primary in South Carolina. Unfortunately, his bid was declined by the Carolina Democratic Party, and Colbert ended his campaign on November 5th, shortly before the show went off the air temporarily due to the Writers Guild of America strike. When a show returned without writers in early 2008, Colbert teamed up with Jon Stewart and Conan O'Brien for a mock feud between the three late-night programs based around politician Mike Huckabee. During 2008, The Colbert Report won the first of six Emmy Awards, the first of seven Producer Guild Awards, and the first of four Writer Guild Awards. Also, Colbert won his third Peabody in 2008, having won the first two in 2000 and 2005 as part of The Daily Show. In November of 2008, Colbert aired A Colbert Christmas, The Greatest Gift of All on Comedy Central. In April of 2009, NASA renamed a treadmill in space the Combined Operational Load-Bearing External Resistance Treadmill, or Colbert for short. For the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver, Colbert served as an assistant sports psychologist for the United States speed skating team, which was sponsored by the Colbert Report and Colbert Nation. Colbert had a very busy fall of 2010. First, in September, he testified in front of a House subcommittee on the topic of immigration. Speaking in character, he reflected on his experiences working on a farm with migrant workers in New York. On October 30th, he and Jon Stewart shared a stage at the National Mall in Washington, D.C. for the rally to restore sanity and or fear. Attended by over 200,000 people, the rally was a response to rallies from Al Sharpton and Glenn Beck earlier in the summer. In May of 2011, Colbert kicked off his own political action committee known as Americans for a Better Tomorrow Tomorrow. The Super PAC raised a little over a million dollars, and Colbert used the opportunity to shine light on how political campaigns are financed. Completely legal, Colbert worked with the former chair of the Federal Election Committee, Trevor Potter, to create the Super PAC, which Comedy Central owner Viacom initially denied him permission to create. Uh, Mr. Colbert, you may form your PAC and proceed as the commission has advised. Knock, knock. Who's there? Unlimited union and corporate campaign contributions. Now you know Colbert Super PAC has a slogan, say it with me. Making a better tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, we all know that tomorrow's tomorrow might arrive any day from now. We must be prepared. In January of 2012, Colbert announced his second campaign for President of the United States in South Carolina by proxy of Herman Cain's vacated ballot slot. Cain had already dropped out of the primaries, but his name was still on the ballot. So Colbert campaigned that a vote for Cain was a vote for Colbert. During this time, Colbert handed off control of his super PAC to Jon Stewart, and the two created several comedy bits exploring what constitutes direct communication between a candidate and a super PAC. 
Colbert shut down the Super PAC in late 2012, with the remaining $773,000 being donated to charities, including a relief fund for Hurricane Sandy victims. For his coverage of political action committees, Colbert received his fourth Peabody Award. In the final years of the Colbert Report, Colbert continued to interview politicians, authors, and musicians that would not find coverage on other late-night programs. In particular, he conducted one of the final interviews of Marie Sendak, illustrator of Where the Wild Things Are, before he passed away in May of 2012. On April 3, 2014, David Letterman announced his impending retirement from The Late Show on CBS. In the immediate speculation regarding his successor, Stephen Colbert was an early favorite and it only took a week for CBS to make it official. On April 10th, Colbert was announced as the next host of The Late Show. I do not envy whoever they try to put in that chair. Stephen Colbert, the television character, however, would not carry over, making the remainder of The Colbert Report a farewell to one of the most influential television personas of the 21st century. The report's victory lap included a week of shows broadcasting from Washington, D.C., including an interview with President Obama. One of Colbert's final interviews was with Smog, the dragon antagonist of The Hobbit films. Finally, the show's emotional finale aired on December 18, 2014, and featured dozens of actors, politicians, musicians, and other celebrities who associated with Colbert over the prior decade. On Tuesday, September 8th, Stephen Colbert kicks off the next leg of his career hosting The Late Show on CBS, and while he has dropped his political pundit character, I have no doubt he will continue to reinvent late-night comedy. He has brought over his entire creative crew from The Colbert Report and has been given complete creative control over the program. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert will be just as irrelevant and revolutionary as his time on Comedy Central. So there's a look at Stephen Colbert's career up to this point. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it, although I have a feeling this one is going to kill me in the editing room, so feel free to comment below and subscribe to my channel to get my latest videos. Uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more here on TV Junkie. Jingle man, Christmas boy, fighting crime with toys, catching smugglers in New York and thieves in Illinois. Oh, jingle man, Christmas boy, fighting crime with toys. Ho, 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 ho.